27th. Is that right? That is January 27th. It is 27th. January 27th. I was like, wait a minute. Is that right? We're almost 121th of the way done with I the know, year. I know. We're almost done with January. So it, I'm Georgia Purdom. This is Ken Ham. This is Bodie Hodge. It wasn't January 27th yesterday. Well, that's true. Okay. But it I, is just today. To, I just want <laughs> yeah. to clarify that. And we have a wonderful studio audience joining us today. So make yourselves known. Come you. on, let's hear it. There they are. Okay, for all those watching, there are millions of people here today. <laughs> and they're sitting in front of us. But we have a whole group from Mars Hill Christian Academy, mm -hmm. uh, which is a Christian school in the Cincinnati area. So here we are in northern Kentucky. Mm -hmm. This is the Christian part of the tri-state area <laughs> because the Creation Museum is here that's and right. the Ark and Ark Ark too so away. that's why it's the Christian part. Okay, so I start off with uh, just a couple of announcements and so I thought what I would do as I go to my own Facebook here and follow along with comments and see uh, where people are at and there's people joining from, oh here, we, someone from Germany, look at that, California, I thought California was shut down. It maybe, is a foreign country. Maybe they're allowed to be on the internet. Yeah, yeah that's, that's Well, possible. sometimes they even shut the power off in California. Yeah, well, that's true too. <laughs> so anyway, uh, many of you know that we use giraffe commercials for the ARC, and we're developing these giraffe characters. There's George and uh, Gloria, and then there's Gracie and Junior. And I'll just show you one of the 15 second ones. Whoa! Told you, Dad, you just gotta think bigger. Hey guys, ah, yeah, great news. The Ark is reopening June 8th. See you there. <laughs> so that was one of the ones where we um, played it when we reopened after the shutdown. Um, but we have some new giraffe commercials now. I'll just play you a uh, couple, of, couple of them here. A little bigger than you thought, huh? Ah, uh, yeah. Went ahead inside? Wait a minute, what? You, you can go inside? Oh. <laughs> really, Dad? Again? <laughs> okay, and this is actually my favorite. And this I is. I know it is. <laughs> you like live streaming, so. <laughs> this is Gracie, and she's down at the Ark, and she is, yeah, she's live streaming. Yeah. That's what she's doing. She's doing a, a FaceTime video. Hi, guys! Gracie here at the Ark Encounter, and you absolutely won't believe the size of this thing. It's hashtag amazing. Hey, make sure you get a shot of the Ark. I'm Trying. It's just so big. I guess you'll have to see it yourself. So, with our draft characters, by popular demand, guess what we have ordered and getting produced? We're getting the plush toy giraffes. Look at that. Oh, yeah. And they're in different sizes as well. You and know, there's, there's one that's going to be four foot high. Yeah, there's some. All my kids are going to want this. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, they want the they already family. have plush toys all over their bed. They're, they're going to want these. So who, who, who would like plush toy giraffes in the audience? <laughs> Look, see, Look yeah, at the they're honest all people. Gonna get, they're all going to get it. <laughs> That's good. Okay, my wife wants a set too. That's good. So anyway. Okay, so Dr. Purdom, tell us about what's happening March 19 to 20. Okay, so that's our annual uh, Answers for Women conference. And so we will be having it live and in person um, at the Ark Encounter at the Answer Center. And... Right now, um, we're, we're nearly full um, because of the COVID restrictions. We're at 50% capacity. So um, we've had so much amazing interest in the conference. We do have a wait list. So if you want to try to come, you can get your name on the wait list and we might be able to have you there. But even if you can't come, we are live streaming this on Answers TV. So you can watch all of the conference there uh, for a, a small price to be able to do that. And so um, check that out. It's awesome it's every year. I love um, being able to host well, that. The great it thing grows is every year. Yeah. And, it's, and down it's the arc, huge. we have a 2,500 seat auditorium. Right, right. And actually, we're filling in the lower level right now. We'll have mm -hmm. 10 workshop rooms and also a, a, a large lab yep. Uh, yep. for workshops and so on too. Mm -hmm. But uh, having the the large auditorium enables us yes. to still get a, quite so a number of people there. Year, and that should be twenty. <laughs> I'm hoping to fill it with all twenty five hundred. <laughs> yeah, they might have COVID twenty. No, there. nope. <laughs> we're not going to talk about that. Okay, so um, we're also having an answers for pastors. Well, it's really for pastors, Christian leaders, anyone really. Uh, conference in October, October five. Seven, and I'm one of the speakers that actually I think mm -hmm. I'm speaking at the Answers for Women. Is yes, you are. Yeah, and yeah. um, Bodie, are you speaking at any of these? Maybe. 
Maybe. <laughs> he doesn't ever remember. I'll look at my invites. It's a little further <laughs> out. So. So, yeah, when he's a little uh, further out. But this out. is how to raise godly uh, generations in, in this uh, secularized culture. And I just came out with a brand new book. Here you it did? is here called Will They Stand? And look, they're standing Parenting now. kids. Standing. Parenting kids yeah. to face the giants. Yeah. yeah. See, they stand. <laughs> they stand on their own. Look at that. It's really my testimony and how I was raised in a Christian home in Australia parents who taught us apologetics to defend the Christian faith and how that led to Answers in Genesis, Christ Museum, Ark Encounter. But then all through that, my wife and I looking at biblical principles to raise up uh, godly offspring. Yeah, it's a, it's okay, so I have, I have people on the comments here that are like, yeah, I got to get giraffes. They want a giraffe. <laughs> See what you did. Now everybody wants to go get a giraffe. I know. People want to yeah. order it online. Yeah. That's what they're saying. So when they come in, they're just being produced right now. Okay, Dr. Purdom, over right. to you for today's Good. news item. So this is our fluff item. This car thief realized there was a toddler in the back seat, so he went back to return the kid and lectured the mom about leaving kids unattended in cars. So and he stole this is the a car. Real, this is a real news item. Yeah, he stole the car, then realized there was a kid in the back and thought, hmm, that's probably not a good plan. So he went back to take the kid back to the mom, lectured her, even threatened to call the police on her for leaving the kid in the car and then took off with the car again. Apparently he realized, I, I don't know if, the, if this is a direct quote or what, but they, he heard something like, hey, where are my grapes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So but He's probably one of those ones that gets on social media. Probably. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. notice and his inconsistency here. Probably lives in his mother's basement. <laughs> <laughs> here we go again. <laughs> so yeah. in one sense, he displayed actions that reveal that right and wrong exist. Mm -hmm. But then in another sense, he displays actions that right and wrong do not exist which reveals his inconsistency. Yeah, yeah. but I'm glad the child was returned. So that's the, that's the good ending of the story. You can replace the car, yeah. but the kid, you can't. So that's a good thing. And I don't know if you guys are familiar <laughs> with memes. The, the picture that the, the news station decided to put up here was, a, this is a famous meme that's gone over and over again, the picture. Um, so you can recognize that. But that face probably fits really well. Like, really? You're taking a car? What, what are you doing? The kids thinking Who what's are you? going on. Um, yeah. All right. All right, let's get so, on. So, okay. So some real stuff here. Yeah, some real stuff. All right. Yeah. The massive genome of the lungfish may explain how we made the leap to land. All right. So a lungfish, just so you understand, is, is basically in the category of low bend fish. And so basically it has gills, so it breathes mostly underwater, but it also has a lung, so it can breathe on land. Um, so it can do both. So if conditions, it's in Australia, so if conditions get really dry and it, the water dries up, it can still actually survive on land for a period of time because of the lung. And so they finally sequenced the gen genome of this thing. It's 43 billion base pairs, which is a lot bigger than ours. Ours is only 3 billion base pairs. So it's huge, the largest genome of any animal on the planet. And they're trying to basically explain, because it has gills and the lung, they're trying to see that as a transitional kind of organism as we supposedly came from the water. You know, this gave, the, the ancestor of this gave rise to all the mammals and the birds In on fact, land. Uh, one of the lobe fin fishes called a coelacanth right. used to be considered, you the know, they thought it yeah. was extinct millions of years it. ago because mm -hmm. it had evolved into a land animal and then they found them living off the coast of Madagascar mm -hmm. and so on. And the lobe fins, they actually have bones loosely right. embedded in the lobe fins. So they say, oh, that's becoming uh, uh, appendages, you know, mm -hmm. uh, like legs so they can walk mm -hmm. on. But it's, it's, it actually, when you look at these lobe fin fish in water, because of the lobe fins, they're able to be like little helicopters and, right. <laughs> and right. so they're, they're really pretty, maneuver yeah. uh, really, mm -hmm. really well. It's interesting. They say here to start with, if you are a lucky species, you'll stumble into random gene mutations. They just happen to help you survive better. Obviously, evolution's fact. <laughs> My favorite. You thing. can see from that. In other words, by dumb luck, we yep. evolved. Right. That's what it's saying. That's what and Dr. That, that would be losses would say, in their right? view anyway. Yeah. Um, you know, I look at something like this, and I, I, I just can't help but notice that this is a creature that's alive today. It's in Australia. Yep. And they're wanting to say that this is our oh. evolutionary ancestor right. that's alive today. Do you they, see how illogical that really is? They say we share genes with the lungfish. Well, and see, that's the thing. So they're observing the fact that the lungfish has genes to allow it to smell airborne odors. 
okay? And they say, oh, well, it must have acquired these genes through mutation, through dumb luck, um, and right. that allowed it to help right. make the transition. But again, that's an evolutionary interpretation of an, of an observable fact, right? It is a fact that they have these genes. It's not a fact about how those genes got there in the first place, right? That's all based on evolutionary ideas. It says it's a bizarre mix of fish and newt features and weird leg-like lobed fins. See how people get led astray just by the very mm -hmm. wording? Because yeah, they're not right. leg-like at all. They're, they're imposing their evolutionary views on you to try to mm -hmm. get you to uh, right. believe that these are becoming legs. Right. Now, they, they claim these ancestors lived 420 million years ago. Where does that idea come from? Because they find these types of, you know, similar type of lungfish buried in rock sediments that they claim is 420 million years old. The problem is that's flood sediment. About 4,350 years ago, there was a worldwide global flood, the flood of Noah's day. That's where the majority of the rock layers came from. And that's what this is found in. That's how old this thing really is. The problem is in the secular worldview, they take the flood of Noah's day and they want to take each of those rock layers and separate them out to be slow, gradually accumulated instead of being from one major well, flood. Well, as you can see, as you look at these fins, they obviously look like legs, right? Right, but they do have to go on land some. I mean, right. so that makes sense why it would have the ability to do that. Well, actually, they can, the, the, yeah, and they're strong fins, so yeah. they can pull themselves along, right. but, right. but they look nothing like legs. Right, and, and I mean, again, they, they talk about the genome being so large, and they say, oh, well, lots of duplication occurred, and that's why it's so big, and so that gave it the raw material that it needed to work with to be able to make new genes so it could go on land. And I'm like, but... But the animal isn't doing that. I mean, it's not thinking, oh, I right. need to duplicate my genes. I need to be able to have right. raw material to work with so I can make these mutations so I can do this. And they talk about it as if it's like a conscious thing. But evolution, again, is just random chance. Right. It isn't and, thinking and, about these and, and, and am I wrong? Duplication is just, that, that's not new yeah. information. That's not new complex things. That's just like taking a photocopy of a, of right. a piece of paper. Right. You're not getting anything new. You can read the paper over and over again. You're gonna get, not going to get anything yeah. new out of yeah. it. So. But, you know, you said that this is 14 times bigger than our human genome. Mm -hmm. But you know what has a genome that just dwarfs even this lungfish? I do. Tell me. <laughs> amoeba dubia. So amoeba. An amoeba. You know, single-celled organism amoeba, theirs no. is 670 billion base pairs. Yeah. It's huge. We have 3 billion base pairs. They have 670 billion base pairs. Big. We devolved. Yeah. <laughs> So. That must be it. So again, it just shows you know they're looking at these observable facts of the genome, and because of their evolutionary worldview, they decide to place these evolutionary stories and ideas on top of it. That that doesn't make it true. Right. That doesn't. Well, it's fascinating. One, one other thing they say it's a bizarre mix because it has a lung and it has uh, gills, yeah. but again. When you look at animals like that, they're just a mosaic, and God right. created them that way. Yep. And we talked about the platypus not that long ago. Mm -hmm. You know, bill like a duck, beaver like right. tail, they're like idea. a bear, web feet like an otter, claws like a reptile, mm -hmm. lays eggs you know, like a turtle, right. and so on. It's, it's a mosaic, because God yeah. created it that way. Yeah. Scientists fascinate me with the way they name things. I mean, okay, here's a fish. It's got a lung. What are you going to call it? Lungfish. Lung fish. That's pretty creative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what, okay. that's what Georgia would Long do. Lungfish. Right. Let's call it lungfish. <laughs> All right. Okay. Can spiritual directors help? All right. So the subtitle is Non-Denominational Spiritual Companions Offer to Connect Clients to the Divine in Their Everyday Life. So basically, even people that supposedly claim to be Christian are now connecting with these spiritual directors to help them during this, you know, time of a lot of uncertainty in the world. And they're finding a lot of peace with these people who help connect them to nature and all these other well, things. Well, here's an example. The divine. She said that this particular uh, one, her, her spiritual director, was advised her to go outside and take her shoes I off and connect with the ground. Yep. Every time I take my shoes off outside, I connect with the ground. <laughs> I mean, think they mean it in a different way. They mean, oh, they, mean a di they mean a different sort of connection. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all through this, uh, what, what they're doing is it, it's very pagan. Uh, very pantheistic, Buddhist in certain instances. What they're doing is they're trying to be spiritual without God, without the God of the Bible, that is. They're wanting to neglect Scripture. They're wanting to neglect Jesus Christ and, and, and you know, almost do things like what a medium would do or a spiritualist yeah. or a charmer. You know, some of these people that are warned against in Scripture. If you go back to Leviticus 19.31 or 20 verse 6, they're saying, don't turn to these mediums and necromancers mm -hmm. and so forth. Deuteronomy 18, uh, 10 through 11 gives a big long list 
of uh, you know people to avoid those who are involved in fortune telling, divination, uh, charmers, mediums, and and you know people who call upon the dead and the spirits and that sort of thing. The Bible says that's an abomination. We need to watch out for that type of thing. And yet here are Christians getting involved and having no idea that they're just diving right into a false religion. It's interesting. He says at the end here, we support you in finding your own way to God. Mm -hmm. But what does the Bible say? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah, no they, man comes to the Father but by me. There's only one way mm -hmm. to God, and that's through yeah. the Lord Jesus Christ. And they Christ. talk about there being many paths to God, and God is whoever you want yeah. God to be, whether it's um, Allah or the universe or the ground of all being, on all caps. Um, it's, it's your own religion. It's, a, it's your own... Um, it, it's humanistic. It's God made in your image, you know, right. really, is what they're yeah. after here. And, and you notice how they're willing to talk... You know, they'll have news... Uh, items on this and they won't mock it or anything they'll be all serious about it but if you have a news item about people from answers and genesis and believing in god yeah. and the bible they'll mock you uh, because this this is a real spiritual issue but it's interesting that another sentence here says they're helping this woman become the me that god intended and created me to be you know that reminds me of genesis chapter 3 where, what was the temptation of the devil? It, it, did God really say that? And you can become as God. In other words, you can be your own God. And this, this whole article here is about people wanting to be their own God. That's what yeah. it's about, yeah. right? which, which is our sin nature. That's what we want yeah. to do because we're in rebellion against God. When people are not standing on the authority of God's word and they don't know what God's word says, they can easily be led astray into a lot of false doctrine. That's why I want to encourage people, whether they're watching or here in the audience, get back to the Bible, know what the Bible says, yeah. because that's your absolute authority. That's your standard by which you judge all these religions that are floating on around us. And spiritualism, it's all around us. According to the statistics here, they said 27% of Americans define them in this way, that they're spiritual but not religious. Well, guess what? They are religious. Everybody they just religious. don't realize what religion they are. Hey, I just realized something. I think I might, I think I might do this. Because it <laughs> says you can get $150 per 50-minute session for telling people to connect with themselves and the earth and I can't imagine you doing that Ken <laughs> oh I could see Ken like take yeah. your shoes off yeah. go out and stand in the dirt and uh, read Psalm yeah. 119 <laughs> exactly well and exactly. I thought too it, it, people are lonely I mean especially during this pandemic and all these virtual things and it is very very frustrating and hard and I think it's even another reason to say churches need to open up need to have people in need to meet with people face to face because um, they're missing that and they need that connection that's how God designed us to be relational and he wants us to have those relationships mm -hmm. so Okay, we're going to the next one. All right, a single genetic switch can lead to rapid evolution in sea anemones. Okay, so whenever I'm on Answers News, we always have a lot of genetics because <laughs> hey, Australia has that's lots the cool of science. Australia has lots of stinging things. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> when I read that, I thought that. Yeah. So normally, um, these sea anemones would form um, nematoc nematocytes, which are the ability for them to sting. But what they did was they used some genetic engineering to knock out a gene that controls a lot of other genes called SOX2. And by doing that now, it doesn't form nematocytes, it forms spirocytes, which is a different type of cell that allows it to actually hook onto things so it doesn't get moved around a lot. And so they said, well, that's obviously the evolution of a novel trait, right? Something new. This is how it must have happened. But, but it's already programmed to exactly. do it. It's already there. <laughs> and it's a switch. They can switch. It's just a switch. On or right. off. Turn it off. Turn right. it on. Right. And I call Dr. Nathaniel Jensen, who's one of our scientists here, as a PhD mm -hmm. from Harvard University. And I said, have you got any other examples you know of, of where there are switches mm -hmm. uh, in genetics that just switch on and off and can change a trait? Because they're designed yeah. that way. And he said, there are some plants, actually, that are equipped uh, to be able to uh, turn a switch on and off right. if they're in a tropical area to or in a more arid area, mm -hmm. and it'll change yeah. the way they do things. And so, th that, but that's not evolution. They always say, "This no. is isn't evolution wonderful?" <laughs> we yeah. look at it and say, "Isn't right. God wonderful?" Because look at the way He designed these. Yeah. It's it's information that's already there. See, I remember years ago they were talking about chickens going through a developmental phase, oh, and yeah. uh, they would be able to turn this gene on and off. That all birds mm -hmm. have this gene, but if you turned it on, the chickens would actually grow teeth. little micro teeth. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it just lets you know that the gene is there. It's available. It's just, right. is it triggered to hey, keep on or off? We need one of those. As we get older, we need to <laughs> turn on and grow teeth we no longer have. You know, I know a lot of people that could use that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you could use it for hair. 
<laughs> so it doesn't show the evolution of novel traits or new things. I'm just going. Um, Thanks. going to talk one. about the article. <laughs> uh, it just shows that these organisms are amazingly designed and maybe under different conditions can do different things, which is good in a fallen world to be able to adapt and deal with that. Okay. Planned Parenthood president saying abortion is a small part of what group does is stigmatizing, right? So this is about Alexis McGill Johnson, who is the new president and chief executive of Planned Parenthood. And so this is like an interview with her. And basically, you know, what she's saying is don't, don't make it seem like um, that what Planned Parenthood does, that abortion is just a, you know, you say it's just a small part of what we do, and it is, but we don't want to stigmatize it. We don't want to make it seem bad. It's that we, because we are a proud abortion provider. Well, here's the interesting thing, and this is good for us all to, to think about. The terminology in which a lot of our politicians are using is to try to brainwash people in a particular way, and so she says abortion is health care. Okay. Abortion is not health care. It's death care for yeah. the child. That's what mm -hmm. it is. Um, and That's funny. I wrote it, that down. I actually have that over here. Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, you must have stolen it off my nose. <laughs> uh, just outside here, we have that the very Facebook. powerful mm -hmm. pro-life exhibit. I believe it's the most powerful in yeah. the world, and we're building a more permanent location and even expanding it here in the right. Creation Museum. But right at fertilization, you have the unique combination of information. You're 100% you. No new information is right. added. So right yeah. from fertilization, you are 100% a human being made in the image of God. But right, and you're a unique human being. You're not part right. of the mother's body. You're not Everybody part of the else. father's body. You are, you are your own body yeah. at that particular yeah. point. Yeah. In fact, your, your body looks on it as foreign tissue and would reject a fertilized egg except that the uterus, God planned it to have an anti-rejection mechanism. Imagine the so dumb luck. You know, in an evolutionary <laughs> worldview, what, the dumb luck that you would happen to just come up with a uterus to be yeah. able to, to have a child. But you know what? This, this is an, just another example. When people abandon God's word, then anything goes. Yeah. You know, I would love for people to start thinking. Every time they see abortion, abortion is a, it's a nice way of saying murder. Every yeah. time they read abortion, automatically your mind should go, that's murder. Every time somebody says a termination, that's murder. You should have that in your mind, knowing yeah. exactly what that is. Well... And I think, too, one of the things, and just, again, the terminology they use. So they said in this article, they said that some, you know, they don't want women to be forced into pregnancy. And I'm like, uh, okay, other than rape, which obviously a woman is being forced into doing a sexual act against her will, you're not forced into pregnancy, right? I mean, you make a choice whether to have sex. You make a choice about using, you know, birth control or things like that. But I just thought, again, they're making it seem like it's this, it's a choice issue. And so because it's a choice issue, it's okay for the baby to be, the baby's like not a part of that. You know, it's just something that comes out of that choice. And so you should have a right to kill that choice, so Well, to speak. when you think of what's been happening in our culture with the sexual revolution, and what it really comes down to is the reason there's so much uh, about the abortion issue and people get so emotional about mm -hmm. it, and now the current administration, unfortunately, is going to be the most pro-abortion administration in the history of the United States. Um, but what it is, is, is basically we want to be able to do what we want yep. with sex, yep. and exactly we don't want we want to get rid of any consequences. Yeah, any consequences. We want to the be free to do choice. what we want to do. Mm -hmm. It's just like Judges 21, 25. When there's no absolute authority, no king, they all want to do what is right in their own eyes. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about. It's all about justifying, I'm my own God, I can do what I want. Yeah. That's what it's about. Yeah. There's a comment here that says, I've seen the pro-life exhibit there at the Creation Museum. It's very well done. Yeah, it is. That's true. So here's someone who says, I love watching you guys. Can't wait to come visit. See, they like my baldness. <laughs> oh, except for Dr. Purdom. Oh. Whatever, it doesn't say that. No, they, okay. well, they didn't. All right. I just added that just for clarity. <laughs> okay, next. The next article actually relates to this one, the last one. So the Supreme Court hands down its first anti-abortion decision of the Amy Conant Barrett era. Okay, and, before we go any yeah. farther, just the title itself. Yep. You can tell what the article is going to say by the title itself. And here's how I can. When it says anti-abortion up there, why didn't they use the word pro-life? Yeah. As soon as you see that, you know exactly what Vox, the, the position they're going to take on here. Yeah. Um, that's actually called an emotive language fallacy. Right. So this is about the FDA versus the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. And so basically what happened was during COVID, they said that you didn't have to go and get um, to a physician to get both 
um, pills that you need to take for a chemical abortion, right? You, you could get them both through mail order or through a pharmacy or whatever. But now they want to basically reinstate that you do have to go to a physician to get at least one of those pills. And the Supreme Court upheld that. What was in place before the pandemic is now in place again. And yet the whole article was about, well, what about these poor women being exposed to COVID-19? And I'm like, yeah, the thing that has a 99% survival rate, but but you know, who cares about the baby being killed, right? You know, it's just about the women. I'm a heart patient and I can't even get a single one of my heart pills uh, without a doctor's prescription. Right. I can't get those. Mm -hmm. And yet they're wanting to argue that, oh, well, we, we should be able to get these to terminate a child, to murder a child. Yeah. Well, think about what happened during the shutdown here in Kentucky, the governor of Kentucky, <laughs> Uh, shut down churches yep. as non-essential, but vape and smoke shops were considered essential and abortion clinics, abortion clinics were. were considered essential. Mm -hmm. And then when you think every day, the governor of Kentucky gets up and gives what I call his death report, where he says so many people died of COVID related, whatever mm -hmm. that means, whatever that means. Uh, today, but more people die, more children die in their mother's yeah. wombs from abortion Absolutely. in Kentucky every day. And that's okay. Yeah. I mean, that, the inconsistency. That, that, the inconsistency, and they're so and, hypocritical. And we need to understand, too, one of the things that this article says is that the Constitution provides special protection to the right to an abortion. No, no. it doesn't. Okay, the Constitution does not provide that. Judges reading into the Constitution who are not originalist and are believe it's living Constitution, in other words, it's malleable, it's changeable, that's what they think, right? And so that's not part of the original intention of the Constitution. And they also, we talk about Newspeak, and Bodie and I were talking about this before, how they use all these terms to describe the baby, except the word baby, baby. right? Pregnancy, tissue, contents. You know, because that's what happens mm -hmm. with a chemical abortion is it expels its contents. Yeah, it expels you know, the baby. Just, wow. Somebody here made a comment. I think our culture in general is very close to turning straight back to paganism. And yeah. that's really what's becoming, that's isn't it? That's what it is. It's child sacrifice. It's just the modern form yeah. of it. Child yeah. sacrifice to the God of self. That's yeah. really what abortion it is. It really is. Yeah. And if you haven't watched the unplanned um, DVD, I would highly recommend it. This is a tremendous movie. It is challenging to watch, but it's very good to watch, um, showing how um, this, this lady went from, Abby went from being a, the head of a Planned Parenthood, a very sadly, a very successful Planned Parenthood, to being a pro-life advocate. And so um, great, great DVD to watch. Hey, that. this next article has a picture of one of Dr. Purdom's relatives. <laughs> They're going to be offended. Thanks. Well, if, if you believe in evolution, that's one of your oh, relatives. Oh, well, true, true. Because oh. we all came from starfish. Good thing we don't. <laughs> that means they're your relatives, too. <laughs> okay. okay, so let me get this straight. The, the, this is talking about a starfish. Yep. So I wonder where that name came from. You know, it looks like a star. Yeah. Well, is it a fish? Not really. Let's just call it a starfish. <laughs> I'm telling you, scientists are brilliant at naming things. <laughs> Buddy, you are so profound today. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so, amazed. So this thing, they, they think it's an actually um, an ancestor to the starfish, even though it just looks a lot like a starfish, but somehow yes, it's, it's pretty an much ancestor a starfish, yeah. to it because of where it's found, right, in the layers. Right. And th what it was interesting to me was reading this. It says, we've discovered exactly how the first starfish-like animal appeared and then how it evolved into, you know, and it goes on and on. And I'm thinking, no, the, you're looking at the fossil. It doesn't tell you how it evolved into anything, right? right it's it a just fully like functional a type of starfish. That's so, so listen to this carefully when you read these papers. We sit down in a room and we look at every single feature of the animal. Okay, there we are. And then we compare these features with those of living animals and those in the fossil record. And then we use biology and a mathematical algorithm, yep. which means a program we've already put together because we believe in evolution. Based a predetermined result. And yeah. We predetermined what it is. And then they look, oh, it's it's... It's, uh, it's evolving into a starfish. Yeah. Yeah, now once again, you know, they're, they're saying this was found in Ordovician rock, which in their view is somewhere b between about 460 million and 485 million years old, somewhere in that neighborhood. That's just flood sediment. Okay, you have Precambrian, Cambrian, then Ordovician, Cambrian, Ordovician, all that's flood sediment. Yeah. That's what this was buried in, the same flood. Noah's floating up above it um, right yeah. around that same time. And just looking at it from a biblical standpoint, you know, biblical worldview, this is in the same um, uh, basically larger group of like echinoderms. And so it's probably either a different species of echinoderm that we haven't seen before, or it could be um, just 
you know, uh, what was I saying? It could be a different species, or it could be something new or unknown that we haven't necessarily seen before. It kind of looks like mm -hmm. a starfish, but maybe it, yeah, a variant it form isn't, of it or something. Yeah, it's just mm -hmm. a new organism but in that group. Evolutionists, because they believe in evolution, no matter what they yeah. find, then they're saying, how do we fit this in? They make the story because right. they have to have something that came before right. the starfish, right? So. They make a story. And see, that's an important there. point. A lot of the information in here is really fascinating. Yeah. Where it's buried, what does it look sure. like, give a description. That's all great stuff. All of a sudden, though, you got to watch out for the storytelling of, right. oh, this evolved into this or, or so forth. So you got to be able to spot that when you're reading some of these scientific articles. Yep. Hey, it was kind of the next one. I just want to clarify something. Go ahead. I just want to want to make a statement right from the start. <laughs> AIG. Yeah. It's not AIG. No. It's AIG. AIG is Answers in Genesis. Right. That's AIG. That's the Associated insurance, insurance Group. <laughs> yeah, yeah. AIG, the insurance company, cancels insurance of former MLB great and Trump supporter Kurt Schilling. And so this is just another example of the cancel culture that's going on today. So Kurt um, Schilling is a, a pitcher for the Boston, Boston Red, Red Sox. Sox. He, knows, he knows. He knows his baseball really well. Yep. He and helped win a couple of World Series. Right. He broke my Cardinals' hearts one year. Yeah. So he had his family's insurance policies canceled by the company, and it appears that the reason they canceled them is because of the way that some of the political posts and things like that that he put on his social media profile. And, and we're starting to see this more and more. We're even seeing certain mm -hmm. banks say they refuse to do business with certain companies because of the stance they take against LGBT, and, and things like this are going to continue. Or just to general impact. politics. Actually, we've had this happen to Answers in Genesis. Yep. I had an article, I think it was last year, about that. a company called Indeed out of Texas mm -hmm. uh, where you can go and advertise job vacancies that right. you have, and it's the biggest it's one. It's a big one, yeah. Uh, yeah. In, in the States, and well known, and they cancelled us from being able to use them because of our statement of yeah. faith, because yeah. we're Christians. So they actually put it in writing. We got it in writing. Mm -hmm. There's an article on our website about that. Um, because you guys are Christians. We're not doing that. You know, basically is really what it was. Yeah. And they, they want, and even in the article, it says they want people to have to be totally submissive to, the, to the, these, this culture. And anyone who disagrees, you're out. I mean, you're going to be canceled. You're mm -hmm. not going to be allowed to say what you want to yeah. say. You know, the more that this happens too, we're going to get to the stage where, you, you know, you're a Christian and you yeah. can't have this or you yeah. can't buy this or do this. Mm -hmm. You can see how that sort of thing can happen. And we're going to have to be really know yeah. God's word and stand boldly and courageously yeah. on God's word. We need to raise yeah. up generations mm -hmm. who will be prepared to stand for him. And, you know, you, you think uh, persecution could come to America. It's, it's already here. It's already here. This and is it could happen more and more. Think, what, what would happen in the times of the Romans if you lived there and they said, yeah. deny Christ or you get thrown to the lions? You know, mm -hmm. what are we going to do? Um, will the real Christians real stand up? I, yeah. I think that's what we're going to see in this nation. Yeah, one of the quotes in this particular article says, one of their political weapons, and uh, it says, is cancel culture, driving people from their jobs, shaming dissenters, and demanding total submission from anyone who disagrees. And, you know, we're seeing that. We're seeing stuff yeah. like that uh, move in that direction. Yeah. So yeah. we need to be praying for the church. We need to be praying for this country. In fact, uh, for the Western world, yeah. uh, the way things have been shifting in certain instances. All right. Well, we're out of time for today. So we'll see you back on Monday. All right. God bless you guys.